Dr. Fizz with the dot product. The dot product maps two vectors into what we call a scalar. A scalar has no direction, it's just simply a magnitude. And the formula is you take the vector A and B that has some angle between the two and you take the length of A and multiply it by the length of B and then multiply that combination with the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. Now we're going to find for the unit vectors there's very simple results when we apply this rule. When you have one vector i hat with i hat itself being dotted like that, each of the vectors has at length one, whether it be i, j hat, or k hat, because these are our unit vectors, and the angle between a vector and itself is zero degrees. Cosine of zero being one, you get one for the dot product of a unit vector with itself. Now when you take the dot product of a unit vector with one that's perpendicular to it, that has a 90 degree angle, then you get the cosine of 90 is zero and the dot products are zero. So we can look at the dot product here in two forms. One with the definition we gave at the beginning, the magnitudes times the cosine of the angle. And notice that when we give this definition like that, it doesn't matter which one is first. B dot A is the same as A dot B because you're multiplying the lengths of the vectors. You can do that in any order times the cosine of theta. Now if we apply the rules for the unit vectors, we get our other way of looking at this. We have vector A here and vector B written out. And when we use the dot product here, we'll use uh, here a distributive axiom and go in there and have i dot i, i dot j, i dot k, j dot i, j dot j, etc. We'll have nine terms. So here, all the nine terms are written out, i with i, i with j, i with k, j with i, j with j, j with k, k with i, k with j, k with k. And here, these are the terms that follow they hang around when we do this. When we go i dot i, the ax and bx are together. Then the ax here and the by are together for the i dot j. Then ax and bz, and then here ay with each of these. Ay with the x, b, ay with the b, sub y, and ay with the b sub z, and the same with the az with the three of those. Now the fun begins here. All of these are going to be zero except the diagonal components where the unit vectors are the same. So we will get a sub x times b sub x plus a sub y times b sub y plus a sub z times b sub z. And all these other dot products here, when they're different, give zero. Another notation is to use the e hat notation where e sub 1 is the i hat, e sub 2 j hat, and e sub 3 k hat to represent the x, y, and z directions. We simply call them 1, 2, and 3 for the directions, and then the vector can be written like this. i hat, j hat, and k hat being replaced by the e's, and the subscripts 1, 2, and 3 being used instead of x, y, and z. Now there's a neat way to uh, write this uh, compactly. If we introduce the uh, Kronecker delta symbol here, delta ij, this is equal to 1. If the i and j are the same, 1, 1, 2, 2, or 3, 3, and it's equal to 0 if they're different. And therefore, we get in this new notation where we can write the vector as the sum, introducing the summation symbol here where i goes from 1 to 3. When we multiply in the dot product form, putting the dot between here at the two of these, notice we have to call this one j rather than i or anything you want because you have nine terms in general and this means you can have a one 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 two one three like we did earlier so we do that to play it safe and then we can collect the coefficients here in the front and have the dot product over at the right and since this dot product can be replaced by the delta ij, we do that, and we can see then now i has to be j for it to survive and contribute. So therefore we can replace this with the sum, i go from one to th goes from one to three, and it's a sub i, b sub i. So we can write this out 
in this fashion all these are equivalent this one here is the same as here as we write this out now with Einstein's summation convention we do not write the summation sign we just assume here that when two indices are the same it's assumed that you have one one two two three three you're going to add those three together so in that case summation signs are missing and we have a i e sub i hat dotted with the b j e sub j hat so we move the coefficients out have the dot product here and this is simply delta i j that means the j must be i or vice versa so we have a sub i b sub i or we have a sub j b sub j it doesn't matter and here is a picture of leopold Kronecker after whom the symbol is named